let's start with, um, uh, I'd like to start with you, John, on just to sort of bring us into uh, the world of fact a little bit. Um, it seemed to me, and maybe you guys agree, that going into the debates, Obama was like a baseball team who was up nine to two, like in the seventh inning, and decided just to keep things interesting, <laughs> that he would give up a pair of like, you know, two run home runs for no fucking reason. Um, and so bam, it would be close again. Now other people, some pollsters, like I think Nate Silver might be one of them, says, well actually the race was much closer than it seemed before the debates. People weren't really tuning in, and all that's really happened is we've kind of regressed to the mean. It was always meant to be a close election, so it wasn't some colossal fuck up. The fact that he appeared on TV, you know, unconscious, didn't have any effect. <laughs> um, what do you think? Do you think it was always going to be this close and that the debates have been kind of like a circus that we've all, they've been very fun to watch and talk about, but they haven't really been a game changer, or did they change the game? Well, if Obama had performed in Denver the way he did at Hofstra or in Boca Raton, he would have put Romney away. Uh -huh. um, but having said that, the Obama people also believe that this was always going to be close, that there would be something that would give Romney some traction. And the media is hardwired to make it a contest. So we knew going in that even if Obama had showed up and had done a re reasonably good job, that they would declare Romney the winner. That right. The narrative would declare Romney right. the winner because we, we, I shouldn't implicate myself, but you know, the media industrial complex needs, <laughs> needs a close race. And, and so that, that was gonna happen. And by the way, most sitting presidents have blown the first debate. There's, a, there's kind of a long history. I Bush. Yeah. But I agree with you that, that, um, that there's something about Obama that um, likes to sort of bench himself in the third quarter and then hit the jump shot at the buzzer in the fourth quarter. Right. And he's done this over and over again. You might remember in the primaries with Hillary, right. he won all these caucuses and primaries in February of 2008, was just a hair away from ending that whole thing, and then it went on to June because he just kept blowing it and wanted to make it closer so it wouldn't bore him as much. Well, but I remember something you said on the stage. It was, it was three years ago. We were talking about, it was Obama had just taken office, and I think we were talking about his first 100 days, actually, and mm -hmm. they were not a really spectacular first 100 days. Things seemed to be moving sort of sluggishly, and the two things you said that really stuck with me is you said, Two things about Obama, he said, I think he starts slow, and I think he's lucky. Those are the two no, things. I think um, and things. I think they're true, and right around that time, you know, that's when like, he, he personally killed those three Somali pirates. Um, <laughs> one thing where Obama is very good at is taking credit for when, when bad people die. He's like right there to let you know. Um, but, but he did get, like, it was like a perfect, that was a high risk right. thing. Same with the you know, Bin Laden thing, you know, a high risk mission that paid off. Um, do you still feel this way? Do you think that he's going to close strong? Yeah, I, th I, I still think that if you look back on his career, uh, one, he always seems to be, I remember when he first announced in 2008 or what, 2007, 2007. Yeah. whatever that was, then you didn't hear anything for a while and say, what was the bad, that big deal? And, and, the, and, and remember when he ran for Senate and, and his, his opponents started disappearing, one of them one of them made his wife go in, into some sex club or something. They were really, right, right. really wild. He wound up running something. against Alan Keyes. Yeah. And then he ran against yeah. Alan Keyes. I could beat Alan Keyes. Right. Yes. Uh, well, can I just tell a quick lucky story about Obama? So, so when I was researching The Promise, one of his closest aides told me that when it looked like health care was going to die, uh, and they had a meeting, and somebody, Rahm Emanuel, I think, said to him, you know, are you still feeling lucky, Mr. President? Because <laughs> this luck thing was a big one for him. He said, lucky? My name is Barack Hussein Obama, and I'm sitting in the Oval fucking office. So, hell yes, I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what have, yes. you, what, what have you made of of, you know, speaking of like easy opponents, like he's run against people like Alan Keyes. Sure. And um, now he's got Mitt Romney, who I think is like one of the weakest candidates ever. Well, What's your feeling about Mitt? I have to say, 
though. I mean, I, I'm kind of referring back to what you were talking about before, because I've been spending a, a week with undecided voters, mm -hmm. people who are perpetually undecided. And I want to say that that has left me with a feeling that there is no hope left for humanity <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Therefore, I really, I am just not sure what is going to happen in the next two and a half weeks. Um, so you are now undecided. Oh, is, uh, my goodness. I am just happy <laughs> that I'm not permitted to vote by law. Oh, because you're, Cana uh, you're yes, Canadian. Yes, I am still Canadian. We shall see, we'll see what happens after, on November 7th. Well, what are these, you know, I love the system we have in America where, you know, in crunch time, like with all these debates, the mm -hmm. audience is filled with undecided voters. So we oh, like to give the yes. most power to the people who are least capable of making a decision. Can I just say that, so, I mean, I don't want to give away too much of the piece that I'm working on, but so much of the theme for me was, I am so tired of caring what you think. <laughs> you divas, get off the national stage. You don't belong on TV. You are, get, get off my TV screen. I don't want to see you anymore. Right. I can't, you cannot escape with the little dials and the heartbeat across the bottom of the screen it is oh, I really I don't want to I can't give it away but I'm honestly getting palpitations thinking about it so <laughs> terribly upsetting um well, what yes. are what is are, there are they, are they undecided are they fake are they not really uh, well, undecided? no trying they, to get on TV because I'm sure that I, I assume that some people I mean I I did watch there were, Fox had an undecided panel uh, post debate the other day and I really couldn't believe I mean I really couldn't believe it I mean you know when they um like when you do a television pilot, they do these focus groups right. and they always, you know, they go to a mall on the on the on a Tuesday morning and get, you know, unemployed people and people who like would just love to do anything for a sandwich. <laughs> Basically, they just group them all into a room and then they show them a TV pilot and the people go, "I don't I found that guy it was the weird relationship between those two fellas." Uh. <laughs> and that determines basically what you all see on television for the next entire season and I feel like the definitely the undecided panel on Fox was made up was comprised entirely of people who just were ambling around some city somewhere and they just shooed them all into a room and gave them a dial and well, then asked them to well like in the in the town hall debate which by the way has oh. to, it has to end because it is the most <laughs> undignified spectacle. Oh. You know this is basically the most I don't care if it's a Democrat or a Republican the most powerful man in the world being chased around the stage like a French farce yes. by this other guy yes, I know. with a microphone and it's just, it's so unseemly, it's like they're going to yes. have a freestyle rap off or something. <laughs> and, and then the audience, again, it's the undecided voters. The first question was to that dude, Jeremy, Jeremy. and he was like, I'm, I'm a college student, I'm 20, and in two years, can I get a job? And it's no. like, yes, Jeremy, but, Jeremy, but not, not if you're high, okay? You're <laughs> I know. I know. Get off, I know. Get off the fucking bong, Jeremy, and then come back to me. <laughs> and Mitt Romney's like, well, if you're illegal, I'll give you a job at my house. And, you know, they're like, great. But, but again, it's like, it is like the focus group thing. It's like, if you have something really important to do or good to do, you're not sitting in that town hall meeting um, being undecided, I don't think. I mean, no offense if there are any undecided voters out here. But you, you but know where there are no, do you know where there are no undecided voters? On American Idol. They know right away know, who they want. Right away. <laughs>